Hey, this is Damon with Haggerty and our Redline Rebuild updates. We are in our new shop as we've seen and now we have our 440 Chrysler mortar completely tore down and it is really greasy, it is really grimy and uh, but we got a solution for that and that's where Steve rolls in here on the red shirt. He is with Gladiator parts washers and they make a glorious, glorious parts washer. Now, granted, this is slightly above your everyday garage parts washer, but we're trying to be better than that and show some things that are out there for the big shops and small shops as well that will really clean out this stuff a lot quicker and a lot cleaner than our traditional parts washer cabinet. And of course, put our efficiency to work relative to our man hours. So that's where it comes in for me, um, since there's one. So, uh, Steve, what do you think of these parts? They look just like a good candidate for the Gladiator washer, David. Excellent. Absolutely. Excellent. Okay. Well, we're going to push this over there, but let's, uh, let's show them what this thing looks like. Absolutely. All right. Sure. Cool. I am not eight foot tall. I am also not four foot tall, although some people might think I am. Average height, this bad boy is seven foot tall. 52 inch, 50 inch? 50 inch height. Nice. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is the FRT 3650. And what that means is basically we have a 36 inch diameter table and we've got 50 inches of room. We also have an intermediate table that can be easily removed for when you want to clean taller parts. The way it's set up right now is he can take his pistons or any other smaller parts that will fit in this table, in the basket, and uh, close the door and fire it up and let it run through its course. This machine has a 60 GPM pump capable of spraying at 70 PSI. Uh, typically we like to run the machine at about 140 degrees right. Fahrenheit. Nice. We have filtration. So we have a bag filter here that we can constantly filter the water and extend the bath life so we don't have to change the water out quite right. as often. And that's gonna help so we don't plug up the nozzles with all the sand, <laughs> basically. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Okay, a plugged cool. up nozzle doesn't work too well. No, right. Touching buttons here. Let's see. So we got our turn. So we're not going to be a centrifugal force of cleaning. It'll be a nice slow rotation. Right. Let the water jets do their work. Right. Yep. And, and of course the the soap, mm -hmm. which is a biodegradable soap, all that mm -hmm. uh, side of things. And mm -hmm. of course is going to take all that grease off the parts. And now, granted, I'm expecting to probably still be some of that baked on grease that you have. We're not going to negate needing to fire blast some stuff, but yeah, absolutely. But we will be heads and tails above going in. And most importantly, what I'm looking at is there's always that final wash that I'm doing right before I assemble stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I see us taking the parts from, from Thurlby's, they're all washed, everything is clean, but there's always some chips in there and I always have to go through and scrub and blah, blah, blah. So my thought process is I'm going to take that block even after it's been cleaned a couple different times and kind of do a final wash in here, blow everything out, and then I can do my final assembly as far as the engine stuff Absolutely. Uh, specifically is concerned. Absolutely. Now I'm also looking forward to be able to use, put in suspension components that have had you know, years of grease that just needs to be blasted off from a, that standpoint before I put it into the sandblast cabinet or send it out to be sandblasted. Right, you probably clean those so, parts now before you put them into the blaster. I do, yeah. Because the grease and the oil yeah, doesn't, doesn't work well work with the well in the sand cabinet. <laughs> right, right. Um, you get big globs of sand instead of a smooth flow. I think it's interesting how, um, you know, initially you're looking at it like, if you notice there's no, there's no door seal uh, in, in a traditional sense, there's no rubber gasket to go bad. Right. Um, because you're using all like double layered, call it encapsulated edges. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the cool, because we're initially we were looking at like, wow, 
we open this up, we're going to get water draining all over the floor. Well, no, because you have this lip. There's certainly some taper to it, and there's a drain that runs right back into this floor of the, of the washer. So very well thought out from, from that standpoint. Like from a maintenance standpoint, there's basically zero. Is that pretty, pretty as, close as to long, that? As long as you keep an eye on your water and your filter. Right. Water level in, in, a, in a clean exactly. filter? Exactly. Oh, that makes sense. All right. Excellent. Excellent. And well, hey, let's uh, we'll fire it up. Let's get it to work. All right. <laughs> We'll open the door a little bit further so you can get them as close as possible. Or you want it like that? Yeah. Look at them muscles. The worst is when they want you to hold it halfway up, halfway down. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, let's yeah. throw them all in there. What the heck? I think so. We won't, we won't load it so tight that it's... Okay. Throw our lid on. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Okay, right, we I have like her that. set for four minutes. Okay. Let's see what happens. All right, I probably got to pull this table back out yeah. of the way here. Yeah. 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 Stay here. Stay here. Shall we see what your first washer cycle Let's looks like? Let's see what it looks like. All right. <clears throat> that's, uh, that's pretty damn good. What do you think? Look at that. <laughs> All right, so here's, here's the main cap. And main caps always have that, well, we saw it going in. It's covered in that oil that kind of gets, it's not baked on, but it's definitely heavy. <laughs> um, and it, this, is, this is clean as a whistle. Very nice. In four minutes, you get a lot of oil that gets built up on the on the rods. Um, usually, the backs of your pistons. These were fairly new. Um, of course, you're still going to have this carbon. This is burnt on, so there's that's going to be tougher to get off. But these weren't, I'll say, free before. They weren't dead stuck, but they were uh, definitely sticky, and they're not anymore. There isn't a drop of oil on these. Wow. Obviously, it's a water-based solution. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a soap in it. Mm -hmm. um, so, for instance, you know, I have a, I have a can or a crankshaft in here with journals. Let's say I was washing this for final assembly. So it's all polished. It's perfect. No flash rust on it at that point. Mm -hmm. Now, what I am seeing right now, I don't have, to, with the exception of where the water is sitting in here. Correct. It looks like because probably because of the heat involved, it's basically dried itself like that. It is. So I'm We're, not getting the flash rust. The hotter the temperature, right. the quicker and the better it okay. not only washes, but dries yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And then there's probably is there some amount of rust inhibiting agent relative to the to the soap kind of in general? A lot of the soaps will have a, a slight amount of RP in them. Right. Okay. Um, You'll just have to keep an eye on that yeah. when you're when you're choosing your soap to, right, to right. go on okay. the washer. Okay, mm -hmm. excellent. I know this is going to sound cheesy and it's a little different than what we do normally in our updates, but I wanted to show everyone that there are some pieces and parts and in in units out there like this that are just phenomenal and do a wonderful job. If you can justify having one. I think it's a, a fantastic investment. And uh, I mean, from what I'm seeing, four minutes, and that was, 
I would have spent four minutes trying to put them in and out of the, of the hand, hand wash. Now, granted, I could have got it and done. That's not the case. Um, but I could, I, I could, I had time to do the phone calls with everybody else exactly. at this you, point. So. You could do something else yeah. while you're washing your yep. parts. Freed up, freed mm -hmm. up some time. Mm -hmm. So, uh, excellent. Um, I, I want to see that block in there now. Shall we put it in? Yeah. All yeah, right. I, let's I'm anxious do, for that. Let's do that. So. All right. Now, so again, the point of putting it in the parts washer before we take it over to Thurlby is to be thoroughly baked and all that is to get the top surface just clean and uh, make it a little nicer to transport as far as that goes. And then also I can kind of uncover some of the obvious stuff. So let's just say there's a, a, a big crack in the block. If it's covered in grease, I can't see it. Um, if this was a part that I was gonna powder coat, I, I clean all the, all the grease off of before I put it in the sandblaster. So that's what I'm after here. On the painted surface that you see here back here on the, on the, on the orange, uh, it's not going to strip off 100% of this paint. Uh, we're gonna get off what's loose and that's really about it. Obviously, we're gonna get water up into the water jacket, so it's gonna flush some of that out. And keeping that in mind, you know, when I'm going through and, and doing a final assembly function, my intention is to be able to put this into the parts washer and do that final wash uh, with and rinse, if you will, without having to run all the brushes through there. So I'll probably have to do some of it just to keep it loose, but then also all that spraying will, uh, will loosen everything up specifically in your water jackets and flush all that rust and nasty chunks out. Yeah, that worked out perfect. Standpoint. Not a lot of fun, but you can do it. We'll let him do the last one. Now that I'm trained. <laughs> Train monkey? Train monkey. On, ready? Mm -hmm. Here we go. Jeez. Nice. That looks good. All right, so this rust was there. This is not flash rust because it's pretty deep. That'll come out with the cutting of the cylinders. Okay, well, Steve and the crew from Gladiator are on their way back home, and uh, well, I got some parts cleaning to do, so I've loaded her back up. This will be my last cycle here for today, and uh, that'll be it. Now, that'll be it. Thanks for watching uh, today's video and update relative to the Redline rebuild and on our 440 Chrysler and introduction to our brand new parts washer. Hopefully you appreciated that and uh, look forward to using it a lot uh, on a lot of different projects. Um, hey, like always, get out in the shop, get your parts washed, right? Get your projects done, get out and enjoy the world. We'll see you.